West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin. Welcome back to Fox News oh, Sunday. Great to be with you, Shannon. All right, let's start with those big stories there. First, yeah. your thoughts on the loss of Senator Feinstein. Such a, such a beautiful person. It really was. And I felt uh, I was embarrassed by some of our colleagues was asking her, you know, maybe a month or two or three ago, that she should step aside and this and that. There's not a person that served more honorably than Dianne Feinstein. There's not a person that basically tried to bring people together than Dianne Feinstein. I was there. I was. I had about 12, 13 years with her, and I could not have had a better role model. You know, we might not have agreed, and our politics might have been different, but she was so compassionate. She was understanding. She says, "I know you can't get there, Joe," and I said, "Diane, I can maybe meet you halfway. I can't go all the way," and we would find a way to move. And that's really what it's about. How do you find a way to serve the people of this great country and also the people that you represent? Well, and that's consistently what we've heard from both sides of the yeah. aisle in the wake of her passing. Now, let's talk about Senator Menendez. <clears throat> You're not among those who have called for him to resign. Um, can he serve effectively? I mean, is this uh, the, the great group that have stepped forward, the Senate Democrats who have stepped forward, is this more about they're worried about what happens to his seat next year or are they outraged by what they well, believe about all, these allegations? You know, Bob, we all know Bob. I've served with Bob for quite some time, and he's very effective. He's very, he's, he's a very strong person. And he spoke to the caucus the other day, and I was just unbelievable the strength it took to go up there in front of your colleagues and say, let me tell you something. I've seen every one of you, every one of you speak eloquently about the rule of law mm -hmm. and how we're so different than any other place in the world. All I'm asking for is to be treated the same. Nothing more, nothing less. Everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Let me defend myself. And that's all he asked for, and I can't disagree with that. So you're going to let the legal process play it out? It should play out. Okay, so I've asked you a few times sure. about your uh, 2024 plans. Many people have. Are you going to run for your seat in the Senate? Or are you going to run third party? But let's start with this. You said this week that you hadn't thought about whether you would vote for President Biden this time, which a lot of us thought was a little bit difficult to believe. But how much may that have to do with the idea that you didn't get what you thought you were going to get in exchange for your vote on the Inflation Reduction Act? You said this week, instead of embracing the all-of-the-above energy bill that was signed into law... Mm -hmm. This administration has once again decided to put their radical political agenda over American energy security and the American people will pay the price. You've said the administration has broken the law. You've said that they've lied to the American people. Did they lie to you? Well, they're trying everything they can to basically implement a piece of legislation they never passed. And they've been taken to court twice. We got the Mountain Valley Pipeline and now the leasing in the Gulf. And I will quote you what my Republican colleagues uh, have said about the Inflation Reduction Act in their brief supporting the, coal, uh, the uh, oil companies who basically sued this administration for taking six million acres off the ability to lease, which is not the way the bill. It said this, the IRA is a balanced, diverse, complex, and overlapping considerations, including growth and conservation, domestic needs and global positioning, and security and diplomacy. This is my Republican. These are the energy leaders of both the House and the Senate. Understand it's a balanced bill. And we're producing more energy today than we ever have. More oil, 4.6 billion barrels this year. More gas, natural gas, 37 trillion cubic feet. We've never done that before. And we're producing more LNG to help our uh, friends and allies overseas. But are you getting what you thought you were going to get when it comes to electric vehicles and battery production and bringing manufacturing back to the U.S.? Not as quickly as it's supposed to be. They're basically breaking every bond in that bill. That bill was very, very explicit in what we had to do in order to bring manufacturing back and not be reliant on foreign energy supplies such as China. And they're trying to put more vehicles out than basically what the market will, will digest right now or want. And it's wrong. It's a bad energy policy. We're trying to keep the, uh, the uh, guardrails on. Here's the thing. They cannot do what they want to do because the bill prohibits you can't just go with all renewables if you're not producing the energy the country needs. We're producing it cleaner than anywhere in the world. Why can't we walk and chew gum at the same time? Well, we'll leave it to you to, to sort out with the administration. If they live up to what you thought you were getting uh, in exchange there, that vote has probably hurt you, I think fair to say, sure. in West Virginia. Um, should you choose to run again, uh, there are conversations about how much that will impact things. There's one outlet that has said it's driven up your disapproval numbers to the point that you're one of the most unpopular senators in America. Um, not sure if, uh, how that factors into you. Well, I don't think that's quite accurate. I think you're very likable. <laughs> whether <laughs> whether, whether people, people want to go vote for you in West Virginia, uh, still, we got to have that conversation. The people in West Virginia are seeing all, the, all of the rewards from that piece of legislation with the new investments coming. We have Berkshire Hathaway coming in. We have basically Forum Energy. 
We're going to be building battery storage at 1,000 megawatts, things that we've never had a diversification. Plus, we're producing more coal than we ever have, better and cleaner anywhere in the world. We're producing, basically with MVP, 2 billion cubic feet more will go into the pipeline, helping the people in the Northeast. Everything that we're doing, and basically this bill is a balanced bill that's given us opportunities we have never had before. Okay. Well, so people just have, basically, people have been demonizing it. But when my own Republican colleagues come out and say, this is a balanced, balanced piece of legislation that is good for America, they've said that in their brief, and they won. They okay. won in courts. So we'll see whether you take this to the West Virginia voters uh, or whether you take it to a third party run. Um, we've had these conversations. Here's what former Obama campaign manager Jim Messina said this week, this talking about these third party runs. You and I remember in 2000 in Florida where Ralph Nader gave the presidency to George Bush. So Democrats have that history and they're going to understand that a vote for these third parties uh, is a vote for Donald Trump, I hope. You said you will not do this as a spoiler. That is not the goal that you have. Um, Jim, I think Jim really forgot that basically it was Ross Perot that elected uh, Bill Clinton. So if he wants to look at it okay. that way, the evaluation, why not have options? People okay. aren't satisfied right and now. People, why not have options? A lot of people like you as an option. Mm -hmm. um, and you've said once you make a decision, a target will be on your back. So you're waiting till the right time. But the fact is the calendar is now going to start working against you. What is the timeline? Do you have any announcements to make this morning? <laughs> Uh, not this morning, okay. but let me just say this. I'll do it. I'm more concerned about the country right now. What you've seen, the theatrics that played out yesterday and up until yesterday, is ridiculous. But could a President Manchin fix that? Well, the bottom line is you have to work in a bipartisan way. Democracy is still an experiment. It was never intended for an autocracy or one side to rule. You have to work together. Kevin McCarthy, I praise Kevin McCarthy for what he did yesterday. He finally realized you can't reason with unreasonable people, with the extremes. I hope the people where these people uh, are represented, I hope their constituents finally say enough is enough. We want people that at least keep our government running and moving in the right direction. We can do that. And I think, yes, I can bring it together. That's all of our, our, I've ever done. But there's other people, not just me. There's a lot of people that are basically in the center left, center right. That's how it's worked. And you saw that happen yesterday to move forward, to keep the country, you know, to I keep know the government open. I know you don't see President Trump in that place. Do you see President Biden in that place? Well, he used to be. <laughs> so if you don't think either one of them are there, are you the alternative? Well, we're hoping maybe they'll, maybe they'll come back to rationale, thinking that, hey, it doesn't work, pushing everything to the extremes. This country does not run on the fringes. It never has. And it can't start now. So they're either going to come back or we're going to bring it back. What's your timeline? Well, I said before the end of the year, I will. We're still plenty. I mean, if, if something what you're saying would happen, there is no primaries. You just go right into the foray. But West Virginia seems well underway, at least on the GOP side. Yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting to watch. I mean, it's, it's, it's very uh, entertaining as far as me watching. And, and these people, I know everybody, so we'll see what happens there. The, the people don't look at me as, that's Joe Manchin, the Democrat, or that's so-and-so, the Republican. They never, it's just Joe Manchin. He's going to be very independent in how he's always voted for 40-some years representing the people of West Virginia. And I've done everything I can in my power to make sure that they've got the best representation they can in a balanced way. Okay. I've said this, Shannon. If I can go home and explain it, I can vote for it. If I can't explain it to my friends and colleagues in West Virginia, I can't vote for it. You can put a gun to my head. I'm not going to vote for it. We won't do that. I know. But we will pressure you to come back <laughs> and give, a, give us an I'm answer before the end of the year. Happy to do that. Senator, thank you so thank much. You, Good Shannon. to see you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.